in this neighborhood are looking for any sign of hope, no matter how big or small it may be. And today, believe it or not, their sign of hope was being able to see the striping on the street again on this part of the street that was completely covered by floodwaters as of yesterday. Courtney Ann Jackson, who was in the Mississippi House and Senate for the historic votes. Courtney Ann, what can you tell us tonight? Maggie, I can tell you that there were more emotions within these Capitol walls than I've ever witnessed in my nearly decade of covering the Mississippi State Legislature. Quite honestly, more than you can probably even capture on video, but we do want to give you a glimpse at the process by which this happened and those final votes being cast. This is an effort being led by UMMC. They are working with several state agencies as well as C Spire. In fact, C Spire has a crew working here right now to ensure that everything goes well. Here's the first thing you need to know about this process is that it is free. The triage part, well, it'll be done on a phone and the testing, well, you would be asked to come drive through these tents. Senator Derek Simmons saying retiring of the flag. This was the happiest funeral I've ever attended. Wanted to share that with you because we also just heard from one of the folks who is part of the Mississippi Women Black Women's Roundtable. When we were talking to her, she had just approached the Capitol as the motorcade was leaving with Speaker Philip Gunn and Lieutenant Governor Delbert Hoseman to take those flags over to the two museums. She said that as she watched it, that it did feel like she was watching a burial, a funeral. But she also kind of echoed those same sentiments that it was actually a happy moment in that moment of watching what felt like a burial because it was something that she had hoped would happen for so long. Yeah, I know that it's dark and so it's not as easy to see what things are looking like, but you probably can see that the winds have picked up considerably. You may can even hear that in the microphone here and we found that a lot of folks in Hancock County are curious about what's to come. At any point over the course of the maybe last week as we've seen the hospitalizations where they are, the cases where they are, have you looked at the data and said something's just not working? When you ask the question, is it not working, it's certainly not working to the extent that any of us would like for it to, which would drive the case numbers down to zero. I'm sick of it! I'm fed up! Let's get it right! Emotion. I want justice! I will get justice for my brother! I want justice for my nephew! I want justice for everybody that's in the Mississippi State Penitentiary! And cries for change. Shut it down! Shut it down! But some speakers say they are simply sharing the cries of those locked up in parchment. Are murdering our babies, our husbands, our wives, our children. I will not be afraid if I have to walk alone. I'm a walk for them brothers that's crying out. Family members shared what they describe as living in a constant state of fear about what their loved ones are experiencing inside parchment. Waiting for that phone call every time. Inmate death is released. You, you cry, you, you scramble, you try to reach out to whoever you know. Others are hoping their notoriety will help raise awareness. Hip hop artist Big Crit says he usually lets his music speak his message, but. I had to be here, get information, and use my brand in any way I can to promote the fact that we need to close parchment down in places like this and shine some kind of light on actually getting people rehabilitated and prison reform and how to change these kind of scenarios because parchment isn't the only place that this is happening. Mississippi native and Saints player Demario Davis has similar reasons for attending. I would encourage the governor to say this. If you can get reform right here in Mississippi, you have a chance to set an example and a precedence for the rest of the country. The problems that exist here in Mississippi are not just in Mississippi. Uh, they, they exist all throughout the country. The calls for change have also turned to legal action. I filed an emergency motion last night on behalf of 29 prisoners at Parchman um, to uh, seek injunctive relief. Some of Mississippi's congressional delegation is standing by Governor Tate Reeves' position. We're not going to participate in a nationwide lockdown. Senator Roger Wicker saying he believes a nationwide mandatory lockdown would do more harm than good. Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith commenting that decisions such as shutdowns or mask mandates should be left to leaders at the state level. And Congressman Michael Guest echoing that state-led responses work best. So what about the businesses the governor says couldn't survive another shutdown? 
Glenda Barner owns Sugar's Place in Jackson. And every day we come down here and open that door, we take a chance on getting COVID-19. They moved to takeout and outdoor dining since reopening after the earlier shutdown, but ultimately she says she'll put health and safety over profits. If the time comes and it's the safety of my family over this restaurant, the restaurant is gone. Campbell's Bakery and Campbell's Craft Donuts owner Mitchell Moore also has mixed emotions about the governor's comments. He's right on one hand, the businesses won't survive. Um, we're, we're barely surviving now. Most people that I know that are small business owners are really, really struggling right now. But Moore says if this state's not going to participate, he thinks there should be broader actions taken. Not having a statewide mask mandate is harmful. He says they're prepared to make rollbacks on their own if the numbers keep rising. We push tables even further apart. We clean even more often, that type of thing. Um, and so, yeah, we, we're doing what we have to do. And if numbers continue to rise, lacking state action, we'll still take whatever action we need to protect our business and protect our customers. Courtney Ann Jackson, three on your side. The water's edge here on North Canton Club Circle has become information central. And as the water goes down, it's the spot where some are coming for a renewed peace of mind. The last time that I was here uh, was a couple of days ago, but this is the closest that I've been, I think, since Saturday morning. And uh, this was about as far as we could go Saturday morning because the water came up pretty fast. Sarah Kimmel's neighbors went back to their house by boat Sunday. Water had made it into the garage, but just shy of entering the home. Now, I don't know about mine for sure, but you know, we're all next door neighbors, so we're all very hopeful. Mary Chapman's been relying on prayers to get her through the waiting game. Been coming by every day. But she's thankful for the way others have pitched in. A couple of times I came down here, a man had a truck and he rode around, let us got in his truck. And we rode around with him in his truck to check on our houses, and, and that's, that's a blessing within itself. Montez Mack hasn't been as lucky. I'm on YouTube uh, looking at drones. I have friends, they have their drone pictures, sending me pictures, YouTube videos, things of that nature. Uh, when people come out with the tow trucks and things of that nature, just asking them, hey, have you seen my house? What is it like? Is the water in there? Anything that's possible. We very thirsty for time, He tried to walk back to his house again after we spoke and was able to finally see it for the first time since last Thursday. Now I'm waist deep in water and my house has about two feet of water inside of it. Everything is water damaged from the couches to doors to everything is just is just gone. Neighbors say now they're just anxious to see how long cleanup may take once they're able to get back in. Andrew McCall is a 14 year old boy who loves baseball and the Mississippi State Bulldogs, but his immune system is far from normal. He has no reserves, as the doctor says, to get any kind of illness, any kind of um, virus, even to get dehydrated a little bit is bad on him. He goes back into the hospital. The hospital is where we first met Andrew and his family in 2014. He was receiving treatments for leukemia. He's in remission now, but the RSV, pneumonia, and multiple organ failure he experienced last year continue to keep him weak. Anything in the world can happen to him. Um, he can get the least little thing, and he is on the verge of, um, you know, falling over the edge and dying. His dad, Perry They're McCall, says because of that, he's living in a constant heightened state of awareness. Is this the day I'm giving it to him? And that's what you live with. He can go out that door when I go work, when I'm out in the world, when I come back, is this the day I bring it home? The McCall's adjusted to a version of a new normal long ago, limiting exposure and sanitizing constantly. But in the midst of the coronavirus concerns, it's either Andrew or it's going to be an Andrew that this is going to get. To those who are frustrated you're being asked to stay inside, the McCall's say this. A week ago, it is absolutely defendable that you do not know that. If you do not know it now, it is willful ignorance or worse, willful disregard to humanity. I don't want to have to stay inside either, but I am um, to protect my son. In Leake County, Courtney Ann now Jackson, three on, on your side. He, literally, he, he is crying because he's not getting to play catch because we cannot risk him 
The House started the process of officially changing the state flag. That began in the Rules Committee. The bill says a nine-member commission will be created to design the new flag. The new design can't include the Confederate emblem and must include the phrase, In God We Trust. It would be voted on by the people in November. If they don't approve it, they'll try again with a new design. Uh, the change is one that many members say is necessary. Hey, you can get your ticket for that train of unification for a greater good that we can all be behind. And it passed overwhelmingly. By vote of 91 yeas and 23 nays, the bill passes. I want people to understand this change is coming from within our state. This is not the result of outside influences. The hearts of the people in that chamber behind me uh, were changed on this. Now that this is gone, that I think that now people begin to say, they'll begin to look and see who the real Mississippi is. They'll begin to see that we are more than what that flag represents. That we are people that uh, care for each other, that are willing to work together, and are, are willing to go forward together. And that's what that says today. The Senate Rules Committee approved it quickly and moved it to the Senate floor. I respect you and I greatly appreciate the stand that many of you have taken on this issue. More senators questioned the bill and seemingly wanted to make their place in history known. I would ask that you, obviously, vote against this bill. And let's move it to a referendum. Let's pass this because it's the right thing to do. We cannot continue to stumble into the back of the We lost the war. Let's vote today for the Mississippi of tomorrow. I vote of 37 to 14, the bill passes. So we do know, of course, that the bill now moves to Governor Tate Reeves' desk. He has indicated via social media this weekend that he will sign that bill, but after checking with his staff, they say he does not plan to do so tonight. Live from the state capitol, Courtney Ann Jackson, three on your side.